the day we're taking a look at these NCAA B matches, which are happening on Tuesday, December 6, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions, you will find the link in the description and comment section below. And make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Wisconsin vs Maryland. I look back at the Wisconsin Wake Forest game where the Badgers couldn't contain Tyree Appleby, a 6-1 guard who put up 32 points in 40 minutes. Young may not score 32, but he's the type of strong and quick guard who can give the Badgers trouble. Maryland is normally not a great three-point shooting team, but they were outstanding against Illinois, and they won with Scott having a subpar shooting game. Maryland's pressure defense along with their experienced starters is going to be too much for the home team. Take Maryland minus 1.5 points. Wisconsin has played very slowly, and the home team usually dictates pace. Maryland prefers to play a faster tempo, but the Terrapins should be fine in a slower game. The Badgers play slow, and Wisconsin won't want to push the tempo against a Maryland team that is one of the most athletic teams in the country. The Terrapins may try to push the tempo, but Wisconsin has played slow all year, and the home team usually dictates tempo. This should be a slower temp game this is lower scoring. Take the under. Duke vs Iowa. Iowa has won six of its first seven games this season, with its lone loss coming against TCU in the title game of the Emerald Coast Classic. The Hawkeyes bounced back from that loss with an 81-65 win over Georgia Tech last Tuesday. They also beat Seton Hall in a game that was lined as a pick'em, along with beating Clemson in the first game of the Emerald Coast Classic. Iowa is led by Chris Murray, who set career highs with 31 points and 20 rebounds in the win over the Yellow Jackets last week. Murray is averaging 21.0 points per game, while Duke has only had one player reach the 20-point mark in a game this year. Duke will be looking to avoid another loss to a quality opponent. The Blue Devils have already lost to then number 6 Kansas and then number 24 Purdue, but they have also picked up some quality wins. They bounced back from their loss to the Boilermakers with an 81-72 win over then number 25 Ohio State last Wednesday, covering the 5-point spread. Duke added a 75-59 win against Boston College on Saturday, but it was barely unable to cover the 17.5-point spread. The Blue Devils were paced by Mark Mitchell's 15 points in that game, while freshman Kyle Filipowski scored 13 points and grabbed 10 rebounds. This line quickly shot up by 1.5 points after it was posted, but I do not agree with the early line movement. Duke has been overvalued in the betting market so far this season, covering the spread just twice in its last six games. Iowa has been undervalued dating back to the end of last year, covering in 11 of its last 15 contests. The Hawkeyes have won six straight games against ACC opponents and have been one of the top offensive teams in college basketball. Duke does not have good shooting numbers, which is going to be tough to correct in a neutral site venue. Take the Iowa plus 3.5 points. This season, Iowa is ranked 8th in points per game, 86.4, and 162nd in points allowed per game, 67.9. The Hawkeyes are making 47.1% of their field goals, while yielding an effective field goal percentage of 56.1%, 39th. They're allowing their opponents to make 41.5% of their field goals, while surrendering 31.9% of shots from deep. 
Iowa is also earning 40.3 rebounds, 18.3 assists, 7.6 steals, and 4.3 blocks per game, while turning the ball over 9.3 times. They have an assist turnover ratio of 1.97, first, recording 128 assists and 65 turnovers. Murray is the leading scorer and rebounder, averaging 21 points per game, T15, and 10.6 boards per game, T12. Murray is shooting 51.4% from the field and 40.5% from deep. Patrick McCaffrey is the next best scorer, averaging 12.9 points per game, while making 41.5% of his field goals. Rebraca is adding 10.3 points per game, 8 rebounds, and 1.4 blocks per game. The Blue Devils' defense is surrendering 58.7 points per game, while allowing their opponents to shoot 39.8% from the field. I expect Duke's defense to pose a threat to Iowa's strong offense and slow their quick scoring down quite a bit. The Hawkeyes have an adjusted offensive efficiency of 117.3, fourth, and an adjusted tempo of 69.9, 90th. Duke has an adjusted offensive efficiency of 113.8, 17th, and an adjusted tempo of 65.5, 279th. When looking at these numbers, we see that both teams are excellent at putting points on the board every possession, but they play with different tempos. The Hawkeyes play faster than Duke, but the Duke defense will slow them down and force them to set the offense up more. Duke plays a bit slower than Iowa, and I expect them to take their time on offense to ensure points. With a strong Blue Devils defense and the slower Duke offense, expect a low scoring game. Take the under 146.5 points. Epperdine vs Nevada. Senior guard Gerard Lucas led the way for the Wolf Pack with 18 points, 4-4-7 from deep. But the rest of Nevada's starting five went 1-4-10 from beyond the arc, and senior G. Keenan Blackshear had just five points on a terrible 2-4-12 shooting from the field. Blackshear is now tallying 11.9 points, 5.9 rebounds, and 5.8 assists per game, while Lucas is adding 17.2 points and 2.6 boards a night. Nevada is number 89 in the Ken Palm rankings. The Wolf Pack score 105.7 points per 100 possessions, 105th in the nation, on 42.9% shooting from the field, 256th, and 37.5% from beyond the three-point line, 60th. They are 6th in the nation in free throws made, 19.3 per game. The Wolf Packs are under 97.8 points per 100 possessions, 87th, on 36.8% shooting from the field, 21st, and 27.8% from downtown, 39th. According to Bart Torvik Nevada is 269th in opposing free throw rate. Sophomore forward Maxwell Lewis, 18.0 PPG, 5.9 RPG, tortured the Lumberjacks for 30 points on 12 for 19 shooting from the field. He also had six rebounds and a couple of steals. Sophomore guard Mike Mitchell Jr. accounted for 17 points and four assists, while fellow Sophomore G. Houston Millett added 16 points, six boards, and five dishes. The Wolf Pack are a tough defensive team, but they'll struggle to cope with the waves. Maxwell Lewis has been unstoppable thus far and will torture Nevada's interior D. He's also capable of hitting threes, while both Mike Mitchell Jr. and Houston Millett can make it rain from beyond the arc. Pepperdine is not an elite defensive team. The Waves will lean on their offense, trying to speed up things as much as possible while taking good care of the ball. They are handing out 17.0 assists per game, 29th in the nation, and committing 13.6 turnovers a night, 144th. Pepperdine is undefeated in five straight outings on the home court. Take the Pepperdine waves to win. These two teams are more than happy to let it fly, and I expect this one turns into a bit of a shootout. On the year, 41.3% of Pepperdine's shots have been from three-point range, while Nevada has shot 42.1% of their shots from behind the arc. When these two played last year they hit 145. Defense will play second fiddle in this one. Take the over 143.5 points.